What is up everybody, my fellow Uber and Lyft connoisseurs. <laughs> um, hope you guys are doing well lately and this week and out there just crushing rides. Um, what I'm gonna do today is a video on some of the bigger, like little secrets and tricks I've learned as I've been a driver. Um, how to really increase my earnings or just have a better night overall. Um, some of these you may have heard me talk about before, but there's a few of these I'm pretty confident I've never shared before. So uh, let's uh, let's dive right into that. Right before we get started, though, I want to tell you guys about an app called GetUpside. GetUpside is a really incredible app, and uh, basically um, it saves you money on your gas. It's a very easy way of saying it. So the very first time you use the app, you get 25 cents off per gallon. And the next time you use it, you get one cent off per, per gallon per every person you've referred. So basically, if you know like 10 people that would want to save money on gas, you send them to your link, and then you're saving 10 cents off per gallon every time you fill up. And then if you combine it with something like Uber and Lyft's fuel rewards, you know, I mean, you could be upwards of 17 to 20 cents per gallon, depending on what your reward status is at. So... I think this is a really like awesome app and one that we should all really be like looking into and using because gas is probably our biggest expense, uh, especially in the terms of a full year. And you're talking, you know, one or two hundred dollars a week, like that could be a few hundred dollars in savings at the end of the year. So it's really something to look into, you know. So get upside, link in the description. Let's check it out. So. I will, I'm going to preface by saying that most of these things I'm going to say are way more applicable to Uber than Lyft. The reason being is that Lyft is, I mean, <laughs> Lyft is not as good as Uber. Um, so, hmm, I, I don't know, I'm trying to think of ways I could incorporate these in with Lyft, but there really is no way. Like, Lyft makes it really difficult to really overachieve or do more than you really can. It's kind of like, you go out there and you do rides, you're not going to get really any kind of surging. I mean, I don't know, supposedly, like, like, some people have told me they do still get really good bonuses from Lyft. I drive pretty frequently, and I'm, like, yet to see a good prime time or a good bonus or whatever they call it now from them. And a lot of my tricks are working and playing into that. So I don't know if any of you have some good lift tricks, you know, let me know. But mainly for Uber and the biggest and most important thing is your destination trips. One of the easiest ways to make a lot, a lot of money on this is utilizing these destination trips the right way. So the first way that I do it is during surge times and this is um this is i try to do this in like a known surge time like i don't like doing this trick in just like a random you know five dollar uber surge that pops up randomly on the map you see what i'm saying and you'll understand why so let's say it's like 1 45 a.m on a saturday or a friday night bars are about to let out in 15 minutes and usually at this point, I have, I'll be waiting like right outside one of the crazier areas. And I usually get there at like 1.40. Um, from 1 to 2 a.m. on weekends, I don't do all that much driving unless it's already surging. I do drive, I do rides from like 1 to 1.30. But then 1.30, I'm like hightailing it for the closest spot I know that has a consistent surge. And what I do is... Um, I basically get like right outside of it or even a little bit in it with the app off. Okay. And then usually at about 205 is where I really see it spiking. Now you got to be careful because every now and then it spikes really quickly at like 150 to 155. And it might be a number that's like really tempting, but it's very deceiving because it usually goes pretty quick. And then it flares right back up at like 215. I think so many people now they're all like, Oh, I'm gonna leave the bar at 150 so I don't get a high surge. And it's like, well, now half of you tried to leave the bar at 150 and you got a high surge. You know, it's like people are always gonna be really bad at predicting surges because they are really random. One thing I have noticed um, in the past is my roommate drives as well. And one time him and I were sitting in our apartments and we had both our phones pulled up and he had surges in completely different areas. 
and I had them in completely different areas. So however they're actually doing the surging is not as predictable, I think, as we think, because I've always thought it was based off demand. I don't actually believe that anymore because of how many times I've seen this on his phone. Um, for example, like there'd be times just like in our city, Phoenix, where on his phone, Scottsdale would be literally like a $10 surge. And on mine, it would be like a $2 surge. And a lot of times we would meet up and we would park our cars next to each other at like 1.50 in the morning, like I was saying, and we'd be looking at each other's phones and looking at a totally different Uber map. So um, you got to know like general areas. Like I think they're still going to play the surge into the general areas, but don't bank on anything too much is all I'm saying from that. So now back to the trick. So what you do is I set a surge then once it starts flaring up to right in the middle of it, because what happens is no one's going to really be um, taking a ride right into the heat of it, because that's probably where all the bars are. It's not like there's apartments. I mean, at the at the most, maybe there's like a McDonald's or something around there that they go to. And even if that happens, it's not the end of the world. So what I do is I set a destination right for the middle and I usually bypass all the one to eight dollar surges and eight dollars isn't bad, but I'm still, I'm going for more of those, you know, 10 to like $13 surges, you know? And so I get right in the middle and then I'm waiting and I'm seeing if it spikes, I'm seeing if it drops really quick. I don't wait too long. I just kind of monitor it for a second. And then once I'm sure, I'll either turn my app off and set a new destination then really far out and I'll and then what I'll do is I just keep declining rides until I see one that's going to be like a 30 minute plus ride now for those of you you have to have gold rewards to do that uh, once you get uber gold rewards they show you where your rides are going before you accept them. Now that is a feature that like you really, really want because the other thing I'll do is if I get one that's like a two minute ride and I know that I'm going to stay in the surge area and I'm, I've been in the area enough that I'll know like, okay, this one will probably last for like 10 minutes. I'll be like, okay, well I could do a short ride and then take a really big one right after that and get like double the surge money. Because if it's like a 10 or $10 or higher surge, like you got to think you're adding an additional $10 per hour. Well, for that hour, for every ride you give, you know? So, and I, I haven't been able to pull this off all the time with the short rides, but there was one time where I did it just perfectly and the surge lasted for a while. And I gave, I think over four or five, $10 surge rides in like the span of might've been closer to two hours or an hour and a half. But it was a really short amount of time and it was like i remember looking back and it was like a like a hundred dollar hour so what i mainly like doing though is that i decline rides until i get like a 30 or 40 minute long ride because then i get that huge multiplier bonus and so a lot of times i'm finishing off a friday or a saturday night by making like an extra like hundred plus dollars and so on days, like if I've made 150, you know, a lot of times I finish and I make like 300, you know, and that's if I worked like six hours, you know, so like the time you it's like a really high dollar per hour rate is what I'm saying. Um, and a lot of times what I've done too, is I won't even work on a Friday or Saturday, but I'll be up late, you know, watching movies or something and I'll set an alarm even I've done before and I'll go out at like one and I'll give a few rides until like 130, 140. And then I, I knock out that. And you know, a lot of times an extra, sometimes I don't hit like a hundred dollar ride, but a lot of times I hit like a $70 ride based off that surge. And it, it really changes what your overall night looks like. I've had a lot of days where I was at like 16 an hour, the all day, all day and then I would just like murder a surge ride like that and then I would make like an extra you know 120 bucks or something absurd and it increases my dollar per hour up to like 21 per hour then and it makes me just feel a lot better about being out there the whole day you know or however long I was out there so that is the number one I think the most important trick like for uber 
because that's like nearly every weekend if you live in a busy enough city that you're going to be able to do that over and over again. So that's the number one. The next one is on des on uh, consecutive trips. Now, consecutive trips can be insanely frustrating because I have, in a lot of times, um, I get sucked into the little promotions all the time where it's like thirteen fifty for three trips in a row, and I'm like, holy cow, that's incredible, you know? And in my head, I'm thinking, okay, if I can do three in an hour, and okay, I'll go to this spot. Well, here's what I've learned. Every driver goes to that spot. Uh, here in Phoenix, it's a town called Tempe. It's the college area. And so all the college kids go like one or two miles down the road. So I have so many times just driven to Tempe and thinking, hey, I'm going to bang out three quick rides and get that bonus. And maybe I'll even do it twice in an hour, you know, like, like ambition that's not realistic. Because here's the other problem. Every driver is probably thinking similar things like that. One thing you always have to remember about Uber is there's a lot of drivers that only follow the bonuses and the big weekends or the big events. And that's the only time they ever drive. They're not consistent like most of us. Um, so what I what happened was I gave two rides and this has happened multiple times and then I can't get the third ride. And I'll wait for like 45 minutes before I get it. And then it's like, you know, it, it just turned into either what would have been a normal two hours or I end up losing out. You know, one time I actually was below pace because of it. So what I generally do for these three trip consecutive bonuses is I go to the areas where I think, you know, where I think like everyone's going to avoid. And I'm not going to lie. Like a lot of times these are in sketchy areas, but you know what happens? I give three fast, fast, fast rides. Like it is nuts because all the drivers are hauling butt over somewhere else. Here's another trick I do on the same line. Uh, for a lot of heavier search times, a lot of times I will, or if it's like a predicted search time, like concerts, for example, this is a better way of saying this. If there's like a concert going on, I know that all those drivers are seeing that update on their Lyft and Uber apps saying, hey, the concert's going to let out at 10.30 p.m. Where do you think they're all waiting? 10 to, 10 to 2 minutes outside of the concert. So what I always do in those times is I go to the airport. Because what happens is usually the airport starts surging pretty well because there's so many drivers, you know, 10, 20 miles away at a concert venue. And a lot of times I can do multiple surge rides off airport rides during heavier surge times from like an event. Another good example might be like NFL games. And you don't have to do it just with the airport. There's a lot of areas where you can go and absolutely mop up just because there's so many drivers flocking to other areas. Um, and then the other way, back into the consecutive trips bonus, the other way you can do a lot better with those is I try to get that first ride. And then what I do is then for the second one, and this is, I'd more than likely do this on a weekday rather than a weekend because I want to save my destination trips. But then for the second ride, um, I set a destination for the airport. So what happens is, I get that first ride in the consecutive zone. I get a destination trip to the airport. And where I live, like if you set a destination for the airport, I like probably eight times out of 10 will get a ride to the airport. Doesn't always happen, but like generally most of the time. So then what happens is when I drop off, because again of my reward status on Uber, I get that third ride. And they're airport rides, so they're usually good. I, I probably most of the time get tipped by airport rides. So it's like, I'll have a really strong, like usually two hours because I'll do three trips, two of those being, uh, well, probably more like an hour and a half, two of those being airport rides, you know, one of them just being a regular ride, but usually getting tips on the airport rides. And then on top of it, getting like a $10 plus consecutive trip bonus. I don't really do the $6 ones just because I feel like it's too high of a risk for, not the greatest reward. I mean, that that's a tip, you know? It's like, I trust my conversational skills on getting a $6 tip versus banking on getting that $6 consecutive trip bonus. So usually if I do get those ones, I get them by accident. It's like I just happened to be in the zone and started my first ride. But I don't really fool around with the $6 or below ones. I mean, I think they've got to be more like 8 bucks for me to really want to consider it. Um, but yeah, so those are a few of my biggest tricks. Like I really like these help me make a lot more money. So 
I really want you guys to try out some of these because they really are legit. So give me a shot on those. Uh, let me know what you think. Be sure to subscribe to this video, uh, subscribe to this channel, give a thumbs up on this video, and I will talk to you guys soon.